Hello and welcome, Kingdom Ambassadors, Kingdom Citizens. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your finance geek of the 21st century. And today we're going to be talking about how to own your own debt. How do we make that possible? Is that a possibility? Can it be done? Do the numbers make sense? Is there a strategy out there above and beyond the basics, you know, debt snowball, extra payments, investing in a 401k, you know, the long-term stuff. Is there a fast strategy that's ethical? Nobody gets hurt in the process. I save a bunch of money on interest. I use the system to my fullest capability. I use money like the wealthy. Who are the wealthy? People who are educated. They have knowledge on finance. Not only do they have knowledge and education, but they have the action steps. They've created a kingdom successfully. They've moved forward. They've risen above a system. Okay, how do we rise above a system so that I am not bound to the system forever? I can live free. I can be free of a system, free of debt, free of any financial burden that happens in majority of Americans. Can that be done? I don't know. It's totally up to you. Between the lenses that you view the earth how you view people, how you view a system. Is your culture holding you back, right? Is your tradition of money holding you back from accelerating in the 21st century? Have you become so naive, uh, gullible, uh, hard? Have you become close-minded, close-minded? That you just can't seem to, you know, believe that there is another way. Not only is there another way, but is it more effective? Does it get the job done? Is it ethical? Nobody gets hurt. I get results. Time is money. Do you agree with that? Time is money. So I ain't got time to be fooling around with old, ineffective financial strategies that are not going to get me the results according to the numeros, okay? So let's dive into the lesson. Here we have an example of a 41-year-old female, okay? Income, 10,000 a month. Expenses, 7,500 a month. I am estimating overestimating expenses, underestimating income, and underestimating cash flow so that I create what's called a buffer. We work with conservative numbers so that we can create an ethical strategy, a reasonable plan with effective results. Okay, so income 10,000 a month, expenses 7,500, debt 25K, just a car, 25,000. Cash flow $2,500 a month. I have a personal, revolving, unsecured line of credit at the bank for $30,000 at a 9.5% interest rate. I have $16,000 in savings, aka emergency fundo. And I am going to incorporate the velocity banking strategy and the infinite banking strategy to leverage cash on hand, a line of credit, monthly cash flow, income and expenses. Very first thing that I can do is take a look at the infinite banking concept because of the four major numbers, the line of credit, capital, assets, cash on hand. I'm at a position where it makes sense. So if we went with a company like Mass Mutual, one of the four major mutual life insurance companies in regards to the infinite banking concept, we design a policy where we're putting in 35,000 a year. 
we're going to do what's called a 1090 split, where 10% of 35,000 goes towards my base premium, aka whole life insurance. So, whole life insurance. So that is going to be 3,506.80, just shy of 1096 dollars short from 3,500. That's okay, not the end of the world. So 35k going in. Denzel, how do I get to the 35k number? Now let's incorporate velocity banking. Before we do that, let me finish the rest of the numbers here. So. By me putting in 35K, if I was to do that on an annual basis, my cash value at the end of the first year would be 30,334. About my death benefit would be a little over $1.2 million. And I set a MEC limit, modified endowment contract, IRS limitation of 45,223.92. What that basically means is that I have the ability to fund 35,000 a year for a long period of time. Every seven years, this MAC limit will decrease. So the first seven years are set in stone. I can put in 35,000 for seven years. The next cycle of seven years, I could put in 35K if the MAC limit dropped to say 43,000 or 44,000. And so if it kept dropping every seven years, I could probably fund this thing well into my 70s and 80s, no problem. I don't have to, I'm not obligated to, I'm just leaving the window open to do so. Why? Because why not is my response. Why would I not want to shift money into a tax-free environment, okay? So infinite banking concepts right here is the policy itself, the design and the usage. Now, stepping into velocity banking to actually fund the policy itself, okay? If we took 66% of what I have in the 30K line of credit, 19,800 is the number you will get. So if I took the 19,000 and then I took a big portion of savings, uh, 19,800 plus another, what, 10,200? Is that the number? Oh boy. Denzel's bad at math. 30,000 minus 19,800. Yeah, 10,200, I got it right. So I could take what, 10K or so from savings, or I could just uh, shift the number down. Well, no, I'm doing the math wrong. What am I doing? Hold on. There we go. So if I took 15,200 from savings, 19,800 from the uh, line of credit, eh, left a couple hundred bucks in the savings account, no big deal. We're simply shifting from one location to another. We're shifting money so that I can begin to own my own debt and maximize my dollars, okay? I'm going slow on purpose so that I don't lose people in the processo, all right? So 19,800 comes from the line of credit. What does that do? If I take 19,800 from 30 grand, I'm now in debt, right? For 19,800 plus 25,000. Would everybody agree with me on that? Yes, okay, great. So now I'm in debt, 19,800 over here. I've funded the policy 35k. I took 152 from savings, 198 from the line of credit. Boom, I got 35k in the policy. As soon as I do that, boom, I've got about 30k in cash value to work with. The very next step I'll do is take out what's called a policy loan 
for $25,000. Why $25,000? We have a car debt, $25,000. We're about to own our own debt. This $25,000 car, here's the info, 5.5%, seven years, I'll pay $5,177.09 if I just pay the monthly payment of $359.25 a month. If I was to do debt snowball, I could easily have this paid off in less than a year, right? I mean, cash flow, uh, $2,500 a month, or even pulling from savings, I could wipe this within a year. Agreed, right? No debating that. But what happens to the cash once you've shifted 16 over to the car dealership, to the institution? That 25K is gone. Sure, you're out of debt, no doubt about that, and your cash flow is going to go up within a year because you paid it off faster than seven years. Agreed. And you saved a bunch of money on interest. Agreed. But where did the money go? The 25K. It left you. It left your system. It left your economy. So you no longer have the money. It's gone. So now it's going to take you a longer period of time to recapture, regain $25,000 again. Doing velocity banking and infinite banking, the primary difference is we're going to not only pay off the debt and save money on interest, more than debt snowball, and increase our cash flow by $359.25, but we're going to retain the 25 k It's going to become ours, right? So recap, took nineteen eight dollars from the line of credit, took fifteen two dollars from savings, put into the mass mutual policy, boom. Took 25K out at a 5% loan, okay? Insurance company's gonna charge me 5% on whatever I borrow. They're also going to credit me a 6.2% dividend rate on all of the cash, the 30,334, which is gonna offset my borrowing costs all the way down to zero, okay? All the way down to zero. <clears throat> Great, so that's taken care of. This 25K now goes into my checking account and I'm gonna pay the car off in full. Bam, done, wipe it out, right? No mas, save a bunch of money on interest, get cash flow. How much am I in debt now? I just removed 25,000. I now have 19,800 of debt, still, right? But I removed this, gone. Now I just have to deal with the 19.8. Here's how we deal with it as velocity banking practitioners. I take all this income and I dump it into the line of credit. What does that mean, dump it into the line of credit? It means make a payment via your paycheck, your whole entire paycheck, monthly, quarterly, uh, weekly, bi-weekly, however, daily, however an individual gets paid, every time we receive money and it hits the bank account that same day, it is immediately, immediately going to get transferred to the personal line of credit. So this personal line of credit, this bank that holds my personal line of credit is going to be the same location where I have my paychecks go to. So that is a, it is a seamless Instant, same day, transfer, aka payment. So what happens? I'm now in debt minus 10 grand. So 19,000 minus 10,000, right? 19,800 minus 10,000, boom, you get a number. All of this 10K is going to show up as principal. Very little will show up as interest. Why? because you paid it in advance. Unlike a loan where the interest is pre-calculated in advance into the payment itself, with a line of credit, it is not pre-calculated. It needs time to accrue interest, right? <clears throat> needs time to accrue interest. 
So that being said, while I'm dumping this 10K in, I'll be taking expenses out to pay my bills. My bills have now dropped by $359.25. So my new expense goes from $7,500 down to $7,140.75. Pretty interesting. Okay, so at the end of 30 days, over the course of 30 days, my balance will be somewhere around this number, $16,940.75 plus some interest at this 9.5% rate. Now, do I actually pay 9.5%? The answer is no. To determine your actual cost of borrowing $19,800 is you would have to take 9.5 times by 19.8 divided by 365. You're gonna get a number. That's gonna be your daily interest rate number. And then what you have to do is minus 10K. Brings the principal balance down. Whatever that number went down to, take that number again, times it by 9.5%, divided by 365. And then you take out expenses, 7,140.75. You get another number, you which would be right here, and you take that times it by 9.5%, divided by 365, you'll have three separate individual daily interest numbers. You take those three numbers, add them up together, divide by three. You'll get a daily average interest cost that might amount to a little over a hundred bucks in the first month. So with that being said, how do I offset my borrowing costs on that line of credit? Well, I'm doing it with the policy, and I'm also doing it over here from which I sent this 19.8 over here to remove the 25 over there. And so if I save this interest in advance, this is now a cushion for whatever interest I pay over here. So I'll end up with a net interest savings of maybe 4,500, somewhere around that number. So really it didn't cost me anything to borrow $19,800. I shifted 19,800 from the bank into my own bank and I shifted my own savings into my own bank, which is gonna earn more money than your average savings account. <clears throat> Pretty cool, right? So say we go month to month, we keep doing it, keep doing it. One, two, three, four, five, six months. It will take me to zero out the line of credit itself. And then I'll have another six months to simply stack cash flow. So doing velocity banking and infinite banking, I'll be debt free from the car in the first month and then I'll be debt free completely from the line of credit within six months, seven months total. Granted, nothing goes down, no emergencies or anything like that. So if I do all this, okay, well now I can just leave the line of credit alone for the remaining of the first year, stack cash flow, right? If you do the new cash flow number, 2,500 plus 359.25 times six, boom, you're gonna get 17,155.50. The reason why we're stacking this cash flow is so that we can dump it into the policy the following year. I am not going to pay back the 25K that I borrowed from myself. Why? Because whatever I'm being charged in interest, I'm making it up over here in cash value my cash value does not get affected by the amount of money that I pull out. It'll keep growing. So say for example, moving into year two, I dump in another 35K. 17,155.50 comes from cash on hand, cash flow. And then I can chunk 17,844.50. Notice how the chunk got a little smaller because of the leverage and the cash flow gain ultimately, right, is really what changed the number. 
my new cash flow per year would be 34,311. Huh, lines up pretty well with my funding amount, 35K a year. Leveraging the bank's money, leveraging my own money to keep it in my economy, keep it in my system so it doesn't leave me. And I can use $1 more than once, which is something that Dead Snowball cannot do. It only uses $1 one time because that is the traditional thing. $1 equals $1. That is not true, unfortunately, in this U.S. economy. $1 does not equal $1. In fact, $1 is not even $1. It's nothing at all. It has no intrinsic value. A $100 bill, a $50 bill, $20, it has no intrinsic value. It's not tied to anything, right? So when we begin to learn these things about money and how it really works, we begin to see the benefits of leveraging debt to our advantage, knowing how to borrow properly and how to leverage properly, okay? So as I keep moving forward, the second year, say I take out another 25K and I don't pay the interest on the policy. I let it compound, doesn't matter because I'm still earning more than whatever I'm being charged. It's gonna offset itself, okay? So I take out another 25K. What can I do with that second set of 25K? I'm debt free. Maybe I can invest. What do I wanna invest in? Uh, I don't know. One of the things that God gave us in the Garden of Eden was real estate. That was one of the most critical components that he gave Adam in the Garden of Eden was real estate. He gave him land, he gave him Eden. What did he tell him to do? He said, manage it, grow it, multiply, produce resources, produce fruit, produce activity. So I think real estate is a fundamental thing to have in your portfolio. Now, in this economy, the fastest way for me to get into real estate is by leveraging debt, acquiring good debt to create cash flow. Now we're not concerned about actually paying off the debt because once we transfer from the E and the S side to the B and the I, paying interest on business debt, you get to what? Write things off, deduct depreciation and appreciation and different strategies, different tax strategies. So once we make that transition over to the, from the E and the S to the B and the I, business owner, investor, from employee and self-employed, I now take that 25K and maybe put 10% down on a $250,000 piece of real estate. I don't know if it's gonna be one unit or two units, however it works. I don't know. I just know I gotta get in and figure it out along the way and study and learn and, and you know, hook up with some real estate investors, people with knowledge, right? And then what do I do? When I take out that 25K, I'm doing velocity banking again to bring the line of credit to zero, right? The, the, the 17 that I chunked. Keeping this outstanding. If I took out 25K each and every year and acquired not just one piece of 250,000, but two and three and four and five, and just produced cash flow to come back, right? So basically the, the cost of the property pays for itself via a renter or even a homeowner. And then I just collect the difference, the cash flow. Where does that cash flow go? Oh, I can go right back into my system. I've got space to add more money if I wanted to. I can add a little bit more than the 35K a year. I've got a little space to do so. Remember how I said, left that window open to fund it for a longer period of time. So if we took out 25K each and every year, Interest compounds, I'll have 138,140.77 in loans over five years, but in five years I'll have 178,835 in cash value. Still there. Minus from the two is what you'll actually have available to use, of course, but the cash value never got harmed by this interest compounding itself. 
Reason being is because when I take out money from the insurance company, instead of minusing it from the cash, they're minusing it from the death benefit. I could care less about the death benefit. It's high enough. I've got all these assets working for me in my advantage, creating cash flow. This death benefit will gradually increase year after year after year after year. And when I, once I've created so much cash flow or even 10 X, my income going from 10,000 a month to 100,000 a month, I could easily restore these policy loans over a period of time. I don't have to pay myself back. It's wise to pay myself back so that I can, you know, uh, reuse the money again and, and flow it into real estate over and over again, just more and more going into real estate over and over again, over and over again, right? And combination of 10xing my income, I relieve myself of financial burdens, okay? Very practical, takes a little time a little effort in the beginning to study and learn and practice and practice and study and learn and watch a ton of videos and hook up with a financial consultant, uh, someone that practices the infinite banking concept, the velocity banking concept. That's my specialty here. So if you found value in any of this or any of my videos previously that you've been watching, you can reach out to me. We can work together. You can enroll in one of my coaching services, right? My one-on-one -on -one coaching. Or maybe if you're at ground zero, where you're not even ready for velocity banking. Okay, I'm gonna teach you debt snowball because that's the preliminary pre-game work. Debt snowball still holds its value in that sense for people at the beginning stages of their finances. For people that are struggling financially, debt snowball is gonna be that leveling playing field, trying to get on level ground, trying to tread water, right? But you want to be able to swim like Michael Phelps. So that snowball is not going to be that strategy you want to do your whole life. You want to accelerate even above the system, right? Velocity banking, at some point you want to elevate above that. What's above velocity banking? Infinite banking, right? And then once you've got infinite banking down, you want to accelerate over that. What's over infinite banking? Real estate investing, 10x, building a business, creating a product, creating a service, inventing something, multiplication. What's above all that? Kingdom authority, becoming a king, a leader in your household, in your community, developing a ministry, to personally develop individuals to do the same thing you did over the course of your life, over the course of your period, and become a giver, a cheerful giver, and ultimately align with God's will for your life that He has for you on this big, blue, beautiful planet we call Earth. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Have a wonderful day. God.